All right, this is going to be a desktop review of my Smith and Wesson 625, manufactured early 90s. Uh, it's a 45 ACP double action revolver, <clears throat> and um, I guess the first thing we'll talk about is the trigger. It's got a uh, a pretty smooth double action trigger. clear. Um, not very light. Not as light as like say a K-frame or something, but it's pretty smooth. And the single action trigger is just awesome. If you just, you know, just barely, just a few ounces of trigger pull and it just breaks nice and clean. You can see there's no take up or anything on that. Um, the stock grip with this gun was a Peckmeyer decelerator. Um, from the from the side, it looks kind of thin. That's just kind of how they made them in the day. <clears throat> and I think the reason they did that was because um, this is one of the few grips that actually, for a Smith and Wesson revolver, that covers up the back strap to um, to reduce the recoil. So in order to do that, they made it longer front to back, and they had to to make it narrow so that you didn't have to. Um, so it didn't take up all of your your finger extension so that you could reach the trigger. Um, a lot of folks think the wood's prettier. I think I agree. Um, but I've been too cheap to invest in some nice wood grips for it yet. I'm not a huge fan of the Smith & Wesson Target grips. Um, although they do look nice. Or, I don't know. The checkering's just too sharp and it braids my fingers a little bit. <clears throat> now, the accuracy of the gun has been very good. Uh, the thing for me is my 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 trigger finger is kind of short. And actually, all my fingers are kind of short. I have like kind of a biggish palm and then short fingers. So what happens is that I get everything all lined up and I squeeze through. And right when the trigger breaks, the sight jumps to the right. So uh, you know I try different kinds of trigger pulls and it always does that. So for me, at least for double action. So what I do is I just shifted the sight all the way to the left. And that seems to fix it up pretty well. And of course, for single, single action, then I have to aim right again. Um, and as for the shooting, if you look at my other YouTube videos, you'll see one where I do uh, some action shooting with this. <clears throat> now, the fit and finish of this gun is very good. It's a bead blasted stainless steel. So stainless steel, of course, you know what that is. But bead blasting is where they shoot tiny little glass beads at high velocity to give it kind of a satiny finish um, as opposed to a brushed finish or a polished finish and it's a it's a very smooth finish and it actually cleans up really easily um, that's always kind of nice because revolvers are a little harder to clean up as it is um, the sights are just basic target sights um, the rear sights adjustable for elevation you can see that screw on the top and windage and screw on the side um, and they're just the regular black outline sights. Nothing fancy like tritium or, or um, fiber optics or anything like that. But for target shooting, this is exactly what you want. For faster acquisition, you might want, um, you know, fiber optics. Um, and the holster I got for it is a Safari Land. I couldn't find this anywhere. I had to actually order it right from Safari Land, but. If you stop the video, you can kind of zoom in and see the number there. Um, so I ordered it right from them. I think it was about 30 bucks or so. It's leather. Leather in the middle here, vinyl around the edges. And then it's uh, got a suede lining so it doesn't scratch up the gun. And uh, you can see here, it kind of can just latch on a belt. Have a hard time undoing it without the camera with the other hand, the camera in the other hand. But so that's it. Uh, Safari Land 56913, 569-13. If you go to their site, you can find that. Put this down on the tripod here and see if I can show that a little better. And this is just a basic, not really a cop holster because it doesn't have any retention, but. The gun just goes in there, slips in nice and easy, um, covers up the trigger, but not the whole trigger guard. So this will be good uh, for action shooting. 
which is what I bought it for. It comes out nice and easily, just a little bit of friction. Uh, I really like that holster. So uh, now I'll talk a little bit about moon clips. Um, a lot of you guys, if you're coming from the uh, from the auto pistol world, you won't know what this means, and you'll understand why some people get pissy if you call a, a magazine a clip, because this is what a clip is. It's just a steel clip that holds cartridges. In the case of a revolver, it holds them in a round configuration. In the case of a rifle, like a stripper clip, it holds them lined up so you can just push them down into the rifle's action. It's kind of big in the you know, mid to early 20th century for combat rifles. But uh, the way this works is you snap the cartridges into the to the clip like this and it holds them all together and spaced correctly so that when you want to load it into the gun you just open the gun drop them in and close it. And then after, you fire, after they're all shot out you you know just eject them the normal way. Of course they fell out nice and easy now because they're not expanded from pressure. Normally you would have to tilt it up and and hit the ejector rod. But that's all there is to it. So uh, it's it's quick and easy to reload. Um, maybe not quite as quick as a as an auto pistol unless you have a lot of practice. But uh, the plus side of it is is that they're cheap. You can get six of them for five bucks or something like that. Even the good steel Smith & Wesson ones like this. There's some people that make some plastic ones that are you can strip with your hands. Um, but I, I kind of like these. It holds them nice and flat. and You can just you know fill your pocket up with these things and then as you're shooting it makes for a pretty quick reload. Um, as compared to an auto pistol magazine they're you know anywhere between 15 and 85 bucks a piece. This is just, you know, these things are cheap and simple. Um, <clears throat> I guess that's about it. I'll answer any questions that anyone posts, but it's a really nice gun. I bought it used for, for $600 in uh, probably about May of, of 2011. I think the new ones, they don't make this model anymore with the 5-inch uh, the barrel. They make a Jerry Michelek one with a 4-inch barrel or 4.5-inch barrel or something, and some ugly nasty wood grip um, but I'm, I'm sure that's just as nice of a gun just with a shorter barrel this one's gonna be a little bit easier to shoot accurately because of that because of that longer barrel <clears throat> so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, again check out some of my action shooting videos if you want to see this thing in action <laughs>